All right, boys and girls, so this is the April 2023 test. Just two or three months ago, this test was proctored. I'm going to do the non-calculator section right now. This is the first time I'm ever seeing these questions, this test, so I'm going in completely blind. So if I stumble or anything like that at any point, yeah, it's because it's my first time doing it. But you'll see kind of uh, my, my perspective on how I take these tests and get a perfect score every time. Let's get right into it. Let's take a look down here. This is number one. It looks like what is the graph of x squared minus two? Well, this is just a parabola shifted down two units. So yeah, it's B. What about number two? Number two says, okay, I'm not reading any of that. They just want me to get the C alone. You can see that in the answer choices. Just get the C alone. Well, if I have T equals N C, divide both sides by N and you'll have the C alone. So C equals T over N, D, done. Let's keep flying. This is number three. Number three says, what is the value of f of four? So plug four into the function. Well, plugging four into the function, you have four minus one is three. Three times two is six. Sweet. Let's keep going. Come down here for number four. It says, I'm not reading really any of that. It says, what is the po which of the following possible graphs, combinations of the amount of money in dollars that she can invest in bond L or N? Interesting. Well, there is an equation here. So L plus N equals 2000. So yeah, I mean, it looks like it looks like the answer is B. Why? Well, because you could buy 2000 of one and not get any of the other. And then here, same thing, you could get 2000 of one and not get any of the other. Yeah, the answer is B. Let's keep flying. Come over here for number five on the right hand side. Not reading really much of this, I just go straight to the question, which of the following equations can be used to determine the number of total he spent making the totem pole? Okay, well, unfortunately, we do have to read a little bit. It says, Jalan made a totem pole in X hours. He spent one-sixth of the total time designing, one-third sketching, and one-fourth chiseling. Which of the following could be used to determine the amount of hours he spent making the totem pole? Well, one-sixth plus one-third plus one-fourth. How much is that? Um, I guess I can take them all to 12. So I have 2 over 12 plus 4 over 12 plus 3 over 12. And at the end of the day, 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 over 12. So he spent... 9 over 12, really, 3 fourths of the time doing everything but making it. So if 3 fourths of the time was spent making it, or 3 fourths of the time designing, sketching, and chiseling, which of the following can be used to determine the number of hours he spent making the totem pole? Interesting. So x plus this equals, oh, interesting. So it's x plus all that, so really plus three fourths equals, and the remaining 24 hours. Oh, I really should have read this. It says, and the remaining 24 hours sanding and painting the pole. Interesting. Oh, John made a tone pull in X hours. So X equals three fourths X plus 24. Yeah, the answer is D. Weird, really weird. Let's come over here for this one. Yep, this is just A to the nine fourths. Remember that this is the power and this is the radical. So A. Let's keep going. What about number seven? Well, this is easy enough. This is just going to be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And really, that tells me that the answer is c. Sweet. What about number 8? Exactly one solution. So this slope is 3 fourths. So we just want to avoid anything that also has a slope of 3 fourths. Which of the following could be... One of them. Um, yeah, this is the slope of this one is three fourths. 
This one, this one is negative three fourths. The slope of this one is negative four thirds. Hmm. So B, it actually could be B. Oh, the slope of this one is negative three fourths. Oh, it cannot be this. It can be this. Yeah, and it cannot be this. Yeah, the answer is C. You just want to pick the one that has a different slope, because if they have different slopes, they're going to hit just once. All right, let's keep flying. What about this one? It says, um, gives a perimeter in inches of right angle. Which is the best interpretation of this? Well, think about what a perimeter is. It's x plus x, and then two of those, so 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. So if the width is x, it's got to be the length. Sweet. Let's keep going. What about number 11? It says, what is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept of the line? So basically, what is the y-intercept of the line? Well, you have y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. This is called point-slope form. We use this when we have a slope and we have a point. So at that point, we're just going to plug this in. We have y minus 0 equals, really, I don't even need to put that, equals m, and then x minus x1. So x minus 3 over 2, or r over 2. Great. Now what? Well, at that point, what I'll do is I will just distribute this. I have y equals negative 4 over 5 x plus 4 r over 10. This is a y coordinate of the y intercept of the line. So we have this cool line and then it asks for the y intercept. How do you find a y intercept? You set the x to 0. So set the x to 0. At that point, I think we're done because what's 4 r over 10? 4r over 10 is better known as 2 fifths, B. Sweet, we're flying. Coming out of here for number 12, it says, the height of a cylinder is this, for what value of a sphere and a radius both have radius r? The height is 18, for what r, wow, what value of r will be the volume of the sphere twice the volume of the cylinder? So you want the sphere to have twice the volume of the cylinder. Well, what's the volume of the cylinder? V equals pi r squared h. If you didn't know that, they actually give you the formulas up here. So that's pretty nice of them. I'll just steal these for you. Okay. So again, pi r squared h, so we have pi r squared, the radius is r, and then the height is 18. So really at the end of the day, we have 18 pi r squared. And we're telling, we're told that we want a sphere to be twice the volume of the cylinder. So twice the volume of that, so that's really twice, so 36 pi r squared, and that equals 4 third pi r cubed. Again, that's the volume of a sphere. So now what? Well, at this point, we can just cancel out a pi, slash, slash, sl pull out an r squared from both sides, so we really have 4 thirds r equals 36. Multiply both sides by the reciprocal, so 3 fourths. And what's 36 times 3 fourths? That's going to be 27. See? Sweet. Let's keep flying. Come down here for this one, number 13. It looks like it says, what is the possible solutions to the given equation? Well, yeah, there, this is kind of annoying. Um, one of the best ways to do these types of questions is just plug numbers in. So if I plug 5 in, does it work? When I plug 5 in, does it work? No, it does not work. What happens when I plug in negative 5? Well, if I plug in negative 5, and negative 5, what happens? I have negative 2 times 10 equals negative 20. I'm sorry, positive 20. Does that work? 
No, it doesn't. So negative 5 does not work. So the answer is B. Okay. Perfect. Let's keep flying. Come over here for this one, 14. So what's happening here? What is a y-intercept? Oh, well, we already talked about that. How do you find a y-intercept? You set the x to 0. So when the x is 0, this just goes to 0. Or actually, this is 0. Anything to 0 power is 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. It's D. Okay. Let's go to 15. What is the minimum value of this function? Well, yeah, this is a little bit annoying, but the zeros are negative three halves and five halves. So for me, if one of my zeros is at negative 1.5, and then my other zero here is at 2.5, really their minimum is gonna be halfway. Really, what's halfway between 1.5 and 2.5, or negative 1.5 and 2.5? Well, you can just add them and divide by 2. So what's 2.5 minus 1.5 all over 2? You're just going to get 0.5. So their x-coordinate of the minimum is 0.5. But now, that's not what they're asking. So C is wrong. They're asking for the minimum value. What is the y-value that it's lowest? So plug in 0.5 for x. And when you do that, you get 1 plus 3 times 1 minus 5. So really, 4 times negative 4. 4 times negative 4 is A, negative 16. Sweet, we're flying. Come down here for number 16. This is just an easy solving problem. I have 1 over 8x plus 0.25 equals 0.5. Subtracting 0.25 from both sides, I have 1 eighths x equals really 1 fourth. How to get rid of a fraction on something? You multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. And x is equal to 2. Amazing. Let's keep going. Come down here for 7. So it says that 4x to the 11th over 12x to the 5th is equivalent to 1 third x to the b. Interesting. Well, first of all, the 1 third makes sense because the 4 and 12 does make 1 third. But what do you do through division? You subtract. So really, x to the 6th equals x to the b. b is equal to 6. Done. Come over here for 18. Okay, so you have a right triangle. And oh boy, this is a formula. Sine of x equals cosine of 90 minus x. This shows up every single SAT. And what this means is that if this is angle x, that this angle up here is 90 minus x. Really, the sine of this angle down here is always equal to the cosine of that angle up there. The answer is 0.7. Let's keep going. Let's come over here for 19. For 19, it says, if h, of five, h minus 5 equals 0, where h is a constant, what is one possible value of h? Wow, this is difficult. I don't know what this is. But really, whenever it says f of, you basically plug it in. So plug this in for r. You have h minus 5 minus 1, so h minus 6, times h minus 5 plus 2, so h minus 3 squared equals 0. Thus, what are the answers? The answers are 6 and 3, and really either of those should work. Sweet. I think that's right. Yep, perfect. All right, so that is good. Their last question, wow, this is a really easy SAT. <coughs> Excuse me, this is a system of equations, and how do you solve a system of equations? Well, um, there's a million different ways to do this. But I'm just going to get them all in order. It's really negative 8x minus 10y equals 24. And moving this over to the side, I have 18x plus 15y equals 6. At that point, I want to solve for x. So I should probably kill off or eliminate the y. So I'll multiply this one by 3 and multiply this one by 2. Thus, these would both meet up at 30. Let's see what happens. Negative 24x minus 30y equals, what is 3 times 24? 72. Um, this is 36x plus 30y equals 12. And when I subtract these, or sorry, when I add these straight down, the y's cancel. I must have 12x equals, what is that, 84x equals 7. Done. All right. 
So it's telling us to stop before time is called. I think we have plenty of time left. And I was even explaining a lot of these questions, so we could even go a little bit faster still. Did we miss a question? Oh boy, we did. Look at number nine. Maybe I didn't finish that quick. Let's do number nine. Just by looking at number nine, what are the answer choices screaming out to me? They're screaming quadratic formula. Let's do the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. At which point we have 3 plus or minus square root of 9 minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all over 2. At which point we have 3 plus or minus root 13 all over 2. And I think we have our answer. Our answer is D. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, let's just double check. Did I miss anything? Nope. That is the entire test done. Awesome. So that was really, really quick. And I hope that helped you see the, into the mind's eye of a perfect scorer on the SAT math. If you have any questions, as always, just holler at me down in the comments, and I'll be happy to get back to you. And I'll see you guys in the next one.